Wow, God is great. Yes. Um, we, not we, uh, the singers have been having some technical difficulties, and that's okay. They're going to sing a cappella tonight. Isn't that awesome? We're going to praise God anyways, aren't we? Yes, we are. And he's worthy of our praise, whether the, the stupid equipment works or it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. We don't care. We, we are going to praise him in the good, and we're going to praise him in the bad because he's worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. Uh, Hosea, the sixth chapter, we read this. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. Let it sink in. This is the third night of revival. Ah, look what God's doing. Let me start over so you really get it now. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He is stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Amen? Amen. It is the third night of revival, as I've already uh, shared with you. And I believe God's on the move in our community. I believe God is doing something pretty special and pretty big. And, and, he's, and we just get to be a part of that remnant. We get to be a part of what God is doing and, and just being humble servants and warriors standing in the gap and trying to lead revival in the church because we're never going to win the community. We're never going to bring deliverance to drug addicts, to, um, to alcoholics, to these people until the church has revival. Until the church people get on fire for Jesus once again. And I believe God is bringing revival. And I believe that God is doing something big. And we get to be a part of that. Amen? And it, it's God doesn't have to use us, but he wants to use us. Let that sink in for a minute. He wants to use each and every single one of us. Is that amazing or what? Is that amazing or what? Amen. And so tonight we're going to have revival. And I'm excited for them to sing a cappella tonight. Well, maybe not the big, the big tall one. I'm just kidding. I love you, brother. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you tonight. We praise you tonight, Father, because you alone are worthy of our praise and worship. Father, not our families, not our spouses, not our kids, not our jobs, not our churches, not a tent. Nothing in this world is worthy of our praise save Jesus Christ. And Father, tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you. We worship you. And Father, I pray tonight your Holy Spirit would rush through this place like a mighty rushing wind. Father, let your spirit get us on fire once again. Bring deliverance, Father. Lord, bring them by the highways and the byways. And, Father, before we can bring deliverance to the church has to have deliverance from our sins. We have to have deliverance from the demons that we allow in our lives. We have to have deliverance from the demons that have attached and oppressed us. Father, we got to get rid of this demonic activity in our lives. Father, the church has to get serious. It is past time for the church to get serious, Lord. We have got to take back ground that the devil has stolen from the church. Father, it's time that we get on fire. It's time that we get a fresh baptism of your spirit, a fresh baptism of fire. It is time that the church gets up and gets out of the pews and starts being the church again. And Father, tonight, I just pray that as your spirit comes, 
that you will fall on this worship group, Father, that you will bless them tonight, you will anoint them tonight, and Father, they will sing praises to you, the Most High, and Father, you will bind up the demons and the, the evil spirits that want to come into this place. Do not allow them, Father. Bind them and cast them out in the name and blood of Jesus. And Father, tonight I pray for uh, Father uh, Ethan as he brings the message that you will anoint him from on high. Father, preach through him with power and authority, Father. Prepare every single heart and mind and ear under my voice, whether here or online, Father, to be transformed by the Holy Spirit, Father. Have your way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said... He said we um, had some technical difficulties, but we're not going to let that the devil get to us, and we're going to continue on here. Um, and so it's going to be a little um, rusty. I'm not going to lie, but we will just do our best and let the Lord do His thing. Give us a beat, clap. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Incidentally, I was, uh, I'm was i a cabinet maker, and I've got a, a cabinet shop that I've, I've worked in cabinetries for about 20 years. And uh, one thing about being self-employed, you always begin the day under the gun. And um, so I, I showed up on my up at my shop one early morning and in a rush to get uh, things, the project started. And I grabbed a sheet of uh, oak plywood and I put it up on my table saw. And uh, oak plywood is pretty expensive. It's really high right now. It's really high then. And uh, so anyhow, I set the fence to the uh, the, uh, the size that I wanted, and I ripped this piece of plywood. And just as I got done, I realized that it was I had ripped it wrong. And there was 60 bucks down the drain. And I, uh, I, I wasn't real happy about that. So I got another sheet of plywood, and in anger, I set the fence again. And... The second piece of plywood went through, and I realized in my anger that I had really messed it up. And I, uh, so that was the second one, and I had uh, a lot of thoughts right then. And uh, all things work together for good to them, love God. I was thinking, no, I wasn't thinking that at all. Uh, I was really, really angry, and I thought, you know what, I need to have a little talk with Jesus. Because I was, uh, uh, I, I had a thousand really, really good words on the tip of my tongue that I didn't need to say. And, uh. So anyhow, I, I said, Lord, what else can happen? I need to pray. So I, I uh, opened the front door of my shop and walked outside and I took my ball cap off and set it down on the hood of my truck. And uh, just as I set the cap on the hood of the truck, a bird. <laughs> I mean, it had eaten all day. Cause it <laughs> the Lord answered that. And things can get a little bit worse. So. I was happy to have a little talk with Jesus. We're going to sing it. He break my heart in love. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Come on out of trouble. Here I 
sin by your person Finally talk with Jesus makes it That's just the devil trying to get you down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see what we're going to do next here. we got to pick, um, what did you say, God? I'm going to do that? Sure, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not gonna or let's do this one. Okay, yeah. All right, now this is a good one. You guys are going to have to clap fast for this one, okay? Keep us on beat. Um, Give me a key. Um, some glad morning when this life is over. Yeah, you better. Yeah. No, you sing it anyway. You just start however you want to. Well, where's the, the key at? I'm not getting the key. <laughs> What's happening? Some glad morning when this life is over. You know, when you look around in the world today, and even, you, and you know, it's such a mess, but there's still so many blessings around us when you look, you can find God everywhere. You, can, you know, when you look at children, there's such a blessing that he's given us, such a gift in our lives. Um, the sun in the morning, the sun this evening, what a blessing it is to have the sun keeping us warm this evening. I know we've been here many times, it's been chilly. And so it's really nice and refreshing to have a warm evening. And you just got to look for it and find God in everything that you see and do. So just listen to the words. When I see the sunrise in the morning, when I feel when I hear you, I know it's all part of God's amazing grace, and I believe there's a place called heaven, and I believe in a place called Calvary. I believe in a man who's and I believe. I 
woods there the day my mama went to heaven on her hand as she closed her eyes to sleep Angels take her soul away. On the Jesus feet, and I believe. Oh, heaven. In a place called hell, I believe in a man whose name is Jesus, and I believe that he gave his. And I believe that he gave oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so this this song is um, a song that we've picked up about a year or so ago. And uh, it is incredibly powerful if you listen to the lyrics. It's just everything that you want to say that you can't put into words about what our Christ has done for us and how astonishing it really is and the beauty of his blood. Um, I hope that doing this a cappella, <laughs> that um, it comes through and translates as the beautiful and powerful um, song that it is. If you do know it, please sing along because it will help. Oh, the blood So Oh, the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. So I can let oh, see the, the great I am. Yeah. 
Jesus washes me. Jesus shed for me. I need to pray yeah. for us. This is very hard. Let me, let me get you through this. That's flowing down. Just wait right out in me that's flowing down. So I know it was in that stream. Dream of love. 
with your heart and into Dear friend, all I can say <laughs> Welcome to one of our practices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are nice. <laughs> so glad we're not in pain. <laughs> Up into the water, way out a little bit deeper, wet your feet in the water of his love. So step into the water, way out a little bit deeper, come join the angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. It's time we the people Stand up for what is right. It's time we spread our shoulders back and raise our swords to fight. Amen. For the battle is my weapon and the spirit is my shield. The church needs more of its members to be workers in the field. So step into the water. Step into the water and join the angels singing. The Lamb of God, there's victory for the Christian who walks that narrow way. Amen. There's been a prize appointed for the soul who does not stray. Oh, I want to live for Jesus and be all that I should be so that I can rest with him forever and live eternally. So step into the water, wait out a little bit deeper, wet. So step into the water. Wait a little bit deeper. Join the angels singing. how you let the music cue you when you're singing. <laughs> it makes it really, really uh, humbling. <laughs> All right, anything else? Um, do you guys have any special... I'll be through. We did okay, that. let's do that one. What was your name? I will do Amazing Grace. Yeah, let's do Amazing Grace. Right. There it is.
this way that I love you, Lord.
want to sing of the goodness of God. that it wasn't like how we intended but you know god had better plans so you know it's it's been good so we thank you guys for being so understanding about the mess up but so this song is called he touched me and it's an oldie but goodie so just sing with us if you know it okay let's figure it out we gotta figure out
Well, that was pretty amazing, wasn't it? That was some pretty awesome worship. They truly just let go and let the Holy Spirit have his way tonight. That's awesome. Well, amen to that. That was awesome. Well, without further ado, Brother Ethan, remember to hold the mic up. I told him earlier that I get yelled at by Shelly all the time whenever I'm up on stage singing, so I'm, I better be used to it by now. No, I must have tapped it. How's everybody doing tonight? All the pretty faces? Nervous? <laughs> Xander wanted to sing along the entire time to those songs, so I'm going to tell you right now, if I don't get a couple amens from you, I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> He's smiling and everything. He knows. Oh, babies are wonderful, aren't they? A sign of continuing a faithful church. Have, have any of you ever been to uh, Camp Cowan or ever heard of it? Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, I've been to Cowan three or, three or four times now. Um, and every single year that, that I go, every single year that I participate, and all of the people that are gathered in that one place worshiping the same God who, who have a heart that's ready to serve and, and a heart that's excited, genuinely excited to worship the Lord, not just showing up and sitting down and participating, it's holy ground. Amen. It's holy ground, and it feels, it feels good. It's, it's awesome, but there's a reverence there. And, and reverence doesn't always feel good. It's understanding and recognizing that the God of the universe, the, the Almighty, the highest of the high, who loves you and sent his son to die for you, is watching us right now. And there's a lot of responsibility in the Almighty watching us right now. There's a whole lot of responsibility. But I believe that revival is a whole lot similar to Camp Cowan. I really do, and, and, and it's partially why I think everybody loves to come. It's because the Lord is with us. It's not that he's not with us during church sermons or anything like that, but look at all these different churches that we've got gathered in the same place. This is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus meant by my church. Right. Not my Sunrise Baptist Church, not my Pentecostal Church, not my this church or that church, my church, Amen. my fellow, my, my believers gathered together ready to worship me. Who's excited to be here? Yeah. I'm excited for the Lord to, to uplift this church, this body of believers. I'm excited for the church to, to get back in the game and to fight. I'm, I'm excited for the Lord to restore us in, in spirit and, 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 and give us a fire, a, a willingness, a drive to go out and tell the world, Amen. to evangelize, to speak to people, to, 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 to have this fire in our bones that if we don't tell people about Christ, that it hurts us inside. That's what we should be acting like on a daily basis, not acting, but being like because the Lord is with us. Right. Friends, I'm here to tell you that if we don't, if we don't speak to people, if we aren't outward representations of who Jesus Christ is, if we don't give the good news, people will end up in hell. That's right. We're not afraid to say that word here. We're not. You know why we're not afraid to say that word here? Because we're afraid of people going there. I am a sinful man trying to preach a perfect gospel as the rest of us are. And that's, that's an incredibly difficult task. 
an incredibly difficult task because once again we're 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 speaking about the holiness of God being sinful. And to understand God's to really understand God's grace and his holiness and how how big he really is, we have to understand how wicked we truly are. We don't deserve him, but I'm here to tell you, he is good. He is good. Because of his son, we've got a chance. And that's what we're going to do is worship his son this entire week. I want you to open up your Bibles to uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. I didn't think about flipping my Bible with a mic in one hand. Maybe I should have taken the... <laughs> Ears are too small for the other one. Doesn't fit with my glasses and... I'm sorry, uh, ch chapter 3, verse 5. Actually, we're going to start at verse 4. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for the cry of babies. Thank you for the trees that you've given us. Thank you for this tent that you've given us that we don't deserve Lord, but I pray that we don't take advantage of these little tiny things that we think aren't really that big of a deal. Lord, we get to stay and stand in a free country right now in, in the middle of the city park of, of where we live, Lord, and proclaim the gospel so that all around us can hear, Lord, and there are many places on this earth that are not allowed to do that. So, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for allowing us to be able to do this. I pray, Lord, once again that we don't take advantage being able to do this, Lord, that people come every night, that people, that people have a new fire, a new desire to, to, to know you and to, to, to chase you in all aspects of their life, Lord, and that we never forsake what your son did for us. Let us understand tonight the holiness of God, who you really are, Lord, and why the church needs to wake up. It's in your son, Jesus Christ's holy, precious name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Daryl last night said that I, 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 I hope you're not ready for um, a feel-good sermon because you ain't getting it here, and I'm here to tell you it's not coming here either. I'm sure I'm, well, uh, never mind. I, 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 I finished this sermon last, um, last week, and I, 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 I did a, a tiny bit of, I guess, what you would call tweaking, adding in a little bit that the Lord would say, I want you to add a bullet point here or there or whatever. Um, but I finished, I would say that I ultimately finished this sermon about last Friday. And throughout, <laughs> throughout the last two days, I'm going, okay. If he keeps going on about this, he is going, I'm, I'm going to have to write a new sermon. And uh, throughout the, both days, right, exactly. I'm sure that everybody right here is going, oh, okay, except for him because I know he hasn't written, even started, I'm sure, on his yet. But um, we, um, I, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's definitely nerve-wracking, and, and, I'm, and I'm worried. But I'll be, something that the Lord just really, just, just opened up in my mind, why, why would you worry about that? Why would you worry about that? I'm making, I'm making my point evidently clear. If people, won't, if people continue to come 
and they don't understand that the point I'm making is evidently clear through the things that keep getting said over and over and over, it's on them. It's on them. Like I've said before in, in, in Ezekiel chapter 3 where he says, if you tell them, if you go and tell them that, that, that they are sinning, they're within sin, that their blood is not on your hands. But if you don't and you allow them to continue going on in sin and you allow them to keep living in iniquity and just doing whatever they want to, you're responsible. That's scary. That's very scary. And I'm going to trip over this at some point. This thing's like walking on ice. American Christianity has destroyed the idea of God's church being holy and upright. Amen. Obedience is not a thing anymore for much of the church. Right. And, and, and it's been said over and over that there's a remnant. There are people that are left over who are going to say, no, 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 we are not giving in to this. Amen. We are not going to walk in these sins that these other people continue to do. We're going to stand up and fight in opposition yeah. against that because it's not going to happen. Amen. Not here. That's right. And we are sinful. We mess up. We make mistakes. As I said, this is incredibly difficult to preach a perfect gospel as a sinful man. None of us are perfect. That's right. No man is without sin. No, not one. Hope he's giving me amens now. Um, anybody ever heard of Mike Todd? I, 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 I debated saying saying um, the name or, or not, and the Lord made it clear, yeah. Because if somebody's claiming to be a, a man of God, a preacher, somebody who's giving you the word in its entirety and what it means and in its ultimate respect because there's power in it, if they so far off the rails fail to do that and take on whatever it is that feels good in their heart, we are to call that out. We are to call that out and to stand up against that. Mike Todd's Easter service, whenever... You know, recently, whenever that was, I'm not sure if it was before or after it. Did anybody happen to to see it to take a to take a look at it? Yeah, um, it was absolutely heresy, and it was demonic, right. on all forms, on all fronts. It was it was utterly disgusting. In the, I I, I wrote down a couple things here. On, on what kind of transpired in that. And I and I'm absolutely want to, and I'm going to share this with you. Uh, understand that I'm not standing up. In fact, I'm, I'm taking a stand completely and entirely against this. But I just want you to see a little bit more clearly, a little more clear picture of what's going on in a lot of the church in America right now that people are saying is perfectly fine. During this sermon... I'm sorry, during this service, it was some theatrical, basically, show. There's fire going up behind everybody, and there's w uh, women and men dancing around in black, singing music. And uh, I mean, it just looked something out of like a Halloween type of movie. I mean, uh, incredibly demonic. There, there, there was a portion of this where, where three women came out and were talking about their behinds talking openly about it, saying, well, mine's bigger than yours or mine's smaller, talking in this way about their butts for a, a so-called church show, sermon, whatever you want to call it. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, if you want to flip there, there goes my pencil. If you would like to flip there, you can. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Oopsie. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectful apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but, what, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness. A man commits adultery by looking at a woman in lust. 
a woman commits adultery by looking at a man in lust. Why one? If you are a woman participating in church and you are wearing overly tight pants or overly low shorts, uh, overly low shirts, anything that is that is that you understand that a man can look and lust over, you are creating a stumbling block for him. And there, believe me, for a man to have lust, there is absolutely punishment, and it's serious. Adultery is also what? Idolatry. Do you know what idolatry is? Serious. This is the same, idolatry was the same reason that, that, that God destroyed nations for sexual immorality and for idolatry. Destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. If you as a woman are stepping out and allowing men to look at you in that way, if you are provoking that, I'm not saying that you can be perfect as a woman. There are men who need to absolutely control, all men need to absolutely control their eyes, control their thoughts, and uproot the sin of lust from their heart. That's what we have to do. Do not take for granted what I'm saying as blaming this on a woman by any means because I am not. But what I'm saying is as a woman, you have equal responsibility in this fight. As sisters in Christ, we are on the same team. And we have this in a church sermon. There was, as well in this, Jesus was, was being crucified in this play behind shadow figures. Like I said, these, these black uh, dressed people running around all over the stage in fire and whatnot, and, and he's being crucified on the cross. I say he, but it was actually a woman that was being portrayed as Jesus being crucified on the cross back behind them. Jesus was not a woman. Jesus was not a woman. He was the Son of God. The music featured... I know I have it written down, was from Kesha, Justin Timberlake, and Beyonce. The music featured in this sermon, they're jumping around, some dude's jumping around rapping and talking about I'm getting money and all of this different stuff. I mean, you wouldn't, if, if you haven't watched it, you don't really even need to, but I'm saying that this is, this is so ridiculous, it's not even funny. I mean, it's such a joke. It's not even funny. There is no holiness. There's no reverence in this. It's doing what in, whatever in the world feels good. When whatever in the world will bring more people in for more of this. On that note, I know that it is incredibly difficult sometimes. I know that it's very difficult sometimes uh, especially for me, before I was saved, I listened to very, very bad music on all fronts. I, listened, I liked rap. I liked any sort of country that, you know, had awful words and, and, and getting drunk and women and all the other things. And I, I liked heavy metal. I mean, heavy, heavy metal, satanic metal. That's what I loved it. And since then, I, I, I've, the Lord has, is awesome through, I, I, you know, Christian music is absolutely going off the rails as well. There's a lot of different uh, people that are just, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, we're seeing it, and it's all stemming from these same churches that are throwing these absolutely theatrical, just crap. But be very careful, my point is, in what you're listening to, what you're putting in. I, I, you know, it's something that I absolutely still struggle with because I, I, I love, I love music. I, it's something that, that, that it, it changes the way that you think. Is that a good thing? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I mean, what was that song, Davin, that you just absolutely loved? Uh, Crushing, Snakes. Crushing Snakes. That's an awesome song, man. It is. It really is, and it's got great meaning behind it. It's talking about the, the power of God and the ability that we have in Christ Jesus to destroy the sin beneath our feet. That's amazing. 
But if we're talking about other sorts of music that's just absolutely junk and we're still filling our mind with it, yeah, it may make us feel good, but what's it going to do? Trash in, trash out. It's <laughs> all the saying in the book, but man, it's, it's true. And this was the, 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 the war, I would say, the worst part. And it doesn't really, I guess, seem like the worst part for, for some people, but I, I'm just, this is my last point on it. I'm not going to drag on and on. You get the point. But uh, his words before the performance, his words talking to his congregation, I know that this was part of a sermon that, that, that happened before or after. Uh, no, it must have been before the, the performance was he said, his words were, we going to do everything here just short of sin. We're going to do everything here just short of sin. And then he looks out at his congregation and he goes, man, I feel the, the religious people getting all tightened up now. So that's what we are now. Religious people that want to listen to the word of God. Religious people that want what God wants in our lives. This is what the megachurch is viewing us as now. It's sad. And this is why we must stand up. This is entertainment. They don't want God. They don't know God. They don't want to be like God. They want to be gods in their own life. There, there, there is a sickness in America right now. There is a sickness in America right now. That God, not by us, but that God is too boring. He's not good enough. He's not entertaining enough. We've got to pick up uh, the, 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 the stage lights, man. We've got to bring people in. We've got to have fog. We've got to have fire. We've got to have fireworks. We've got to have uh, the, the, the donuts. I mean, let's just give $100 to everybody that walks in the building at this point. God is just not entertaining enough. So we put on the rock, so, the rock star preachers and light shows to appease for it. Another theology that, 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 that Mike Todd I, I, teaches, and I, I saw it as a part of, of I guess, that sermon. I, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I had seen somebody that, that I respect, that I, that I listen to post uh, uh, directly regarding this. And, and something that Mike Todd teaches is, and I'm sure that you'll hear it, and this is why I'm bringing it up. I'm sure that in the emerging megachurch, in this emerging giant do-whatever-you-want-feels-good type of gospel, that this is going to come from it because it sounds good. It's called the ransom theology. Has anybody ever heard that before? It's that Jesus, by dying on the cross, paid Satan for our sin. That Jesus, by dying on the cross, paid Satan for our sin. This is an utmost lie. The wages of sin is what? Who's going to pay who's going to pay that? Who's going to pay that? Who paid that? Jesus, who did he pay it to? The almighty God. Satan has no part in our salvation process. Satan has no part. It is all due to the glory and magnificence of Christ Jesus. Satan does not even have the ability to cast us into hell. He tempts us there. Yes, God is good. Yeah, and all the time. Is this for me? You can do it again if you want to. Yes, God is good. Yes, God is graceful. And he is wonderful, and he is almighty, and he is magnificent. But God is the one who judges us when we stand before him. That's, right. that's not Satan. That's not your mom. That's not your friend. That's not anybody. That is the almighty God. Amen. Okay, I guess I'm not done. <laughs> Mike Todd, you are worthy. 
You are worthy of receiving grace. You are worthy of receiving the power of God. Over and over and over and over and over. Are we? How about we flip to uh, Ephesians real quick? Ephesians chapter 2. Give me an amen. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the, cor the course of this world, following the prince of the power of air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, even when, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved, what? And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We were dead in our sins. We were not alive in them. What is a dead man worth doing? Nothing. He can't do nothing for himself. We were dead in our sins, and Christ Jesus made us alive. Amen. We are not worthy of anything, friends. That's why God is so good. That's why he's so good, because we are not worthy, and we never will be. When I stand before Jesus, the only answer that I will have is because God. Because you. That's the only answer you're going to have too. Now don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. This, this is simple. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. It is a very simple gospel. But by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. It's simple, but it's not easy. Because let me tell you something. If you think, just like Mike Todd or any of these guys will preach to you, that you will get to heaven because you have grace, I'm going to do whatever I want to, and God's grace is good enough. No, 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 no. God's grace is good enough. I believe that. But we are not to walk in the flesh anymore. We are not to, to, to be okay with If we were, he would have said it. We are born in a new creation. We are now a new being in Christ Jesus. And that does not mean that we're going to be perfect. That does not mean that there is some, some, some limit of works that we have to get to. It, it says it right here, not by works. But we are still to be, amen. We are still to be obedient in Christ Jesus following him. And if you see no sign within you, if you see no sign within you of, of desiring righteousness, of desiring of, of, of Scripture and hearing God's extended character into a book, if you see no sign within you of, 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 of desiring righteousness of what, what the Lord wants for you in your life and, and, and talking to people and doing whatever it is that the Lord lays on your heart, if the Lord's not laying on your heart, the Lord is not within you. It's a tough thing to preach. Because I was there. I was absolutely there. I'll get more to, to that in, in a minute. But and I believe this actually is the last thing that I wanted to say about it. But uh, after this sermon, I, I, I just saw this yesterday, and this is part of what I added back in because I, I was like, I've got to put this in here now. Um, 
after the sermon, he, he actually went out on stage and sat down, and he looked at his congregation, and he said, the enemy's been trying to tell me to give up my position as pastor. That he hasn't been able to sleep. And then afterward compared his trial in this time to how Christ was accused by people of sinning. Com essentially comparing you know, himself to Christ through this because Christ was constantly accused. There, there's, no, there's no more conviction. There's a point where the Lord, hands, hand, the Lord will hand over to a reprobate mind. Do not be deceived. He will. If, it, and, and God is rich in mercy. He even gave Jezebel a chance to repent. He is rich in mercy and he will. If we turn from our wicked ways, turn to him instead. He, he, he is quick to forgive. But we can't just be okay with doing it. And, and I, I, I want to stress it because it's something that I battled for a really long time that, that, that we think that, you know, Scripture, scripture in, in a lot of it, if you read it just by the, by the face of the book, you're going to think, oh, gosh, I should be perfect now. This isn't necessarily true either. We're still going to mess up. We're still going to make mistakes. I heard this, 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 this thing one time from a man that uh, is, is Paul Walsh that had said that if, if uh, a righteous man essentially messes up, and an unrighteous man messes up, and they both do the same thing, but the unrighteous man has no guilt whatsoever. He doesn't want to change, he he, and he doesn't change. An, un an unrighteous man may even have a little bit of guilt over what he's doing. Because our flesh, our fle God, God is within us. Yes, we were still born into a world of flesh, but I can promise you that by morality, all of these things that you hear really smart people talk about, in, in every aspect of our life, the Lord is within us. He wants us. He desires to have us from the beginning when he made us. Of course we're going to reflect him. Of course we're going to reflect him. God makes it clear in Scripture that in the day I speak to you, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Turn to me. There is mercy in turning to Christ Jesus. There is mercy in turning to Christ Jesus and hardening not our hearts. Don't fall into the same thing and just and 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 and, and harden your heart. It's it's very easy. It's very 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 easy. So are you doing this in your life? Are you doing this in your life? Ignoring convictions by the Lord God Almighty. He lays it on your heart and we have the chance. We have oftentimes many chances. Do we go, okay, God, you know what? We're done. We're done here. I, 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 I'm, we're not going to keep doing this same thing where I'm, 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 I'm doing the same stuff and, and I have no remorse for it anymore. Are we going to do that or are we going to turn back to him and say, okay, you know what? It's done. It's done. I'm turning my heart to you. Because I can tell you right now, it is very easy, it is very easy to ignore the convictions of God. The mega church is making us look bad. It is ruining the purpose and what we are trying to do as Christians. The super grace theology is, is a joke. They do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It is blaspheming the grace of God. It is blaspheming the grace of God. When new believers are saved and they go to these types of churches, this is the only thing that they know to be true. This is the only thing that they know to be true. They hear these words and they go, oh, well, man, this, is, this sounds like a pretty good gig. I get to go, go to church every Sunday. I mean, I feel great whenever I leave. I feel amazing. I go fight a war. Yeah. 
and they're being lied to. But we, as the remnant of God, we, as the remnant of God, are gathered here today under a tent, deciding no more. We are standing up against this joke of a church that is emerging in the West right now, and we're saying no more. Today is the day of salvation. We are coming out of this. We are being reborn. We are living a new life, and we will not conform to the gospel of this lie. We will not do it. And let me tell you, although it seems scary, although it seems like there's just not an end to it because this world is hard, Satan's against us, and it sure seems like half of the church is even against us. We haven't lost the battle. We have not lost the battle. In fact, the battle's already been won. In Luke, Jesus said that he has come to establish his kingdom here, and he already did. The kingdom of God is here on earth. The kingdom of God is here on earth. We are the kingdom. We have not last lost the battle. Turn to Matthew chapter 16. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar... Uh, Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. 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 The gates of hell will not prevail against it. We have not lost this battle, and we will never lose it. We just have to stand up and keep going. That is a promise. Now, once again, I, I, I want to go back to Exodus chapter 3 real quick, and you don't have to follow me if you don't want to. But um, I, 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 I really just want to, to reiterate this. Moses chapter 3, then he said, do not come near. Do not come near. The presence of God is so holy that it is dangerous for us to be in our sinful bodies around him. Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. What if we lived every day as if we recognized that the presence of God is within our midst? What if we lived every single day understanding that Jesus is truly watching us? What if we understand this holiness of God and what it really means? How big he is, how great he is, and how perfect he is compared to us? We'd be making a whole lot of different life decisions, amen? amen. We would be making a whole lot of different life decisions. Moses couldn't, he hid his face from God. He hid his face from the Lord God Almighty. We've got people twerking in God's temple. It should make us nauseous. Although the church right now seems to be falling to absolute shambles, I, I, I do believe that this is happening for a reason. As I've said before, the real church is truly starting to finally stand up. We're seeing this happen before our eyes, and boy, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. The true church is finally standing up and saying enough is enough before the Lord says enough is enough. Because that's scary. We have a job to do to go tell the world. I, I know that I, I, I speak a, a, a good bit on evangelism and I, and I just I can't get it out of my heart because it's the way that I was one. It's the way that I was one to Christ Jesus Almighty. And if somebody didn't take the time out of their day to speak to me, I would not be here. You've all heard it. 
Evangelism is the spreading of Christian gospel, whether by preaching publicly or personal witness. If, the, if, if possible, to build relationships first, but we don't always get that opportunity, amen? Sometimes there's a person on the side of the road where the Lord goes, hey, I want you there. Go. Do not miss that opportunity. Do not miss that opportunity because I promise you after that happens, I know you've all have had this where the Holy Spirit convicts you of something and, 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 and you don't follow through with it for whatever reason. I want you to, if he says, I want you given $100 right now and you don't follow through with it, there's going to, every, if every countless word is written down, if we will, if we will make, held, be held accountable for every countless word, what about our actions? Of course. It's, it's in the utmost serious responsibility. As Dave said, you know, we're, we're not here to, to evangelize to the church. Yes, the church needs building up. Yes, we're here. And this is what this week is about, is building up the church. To, to get a new fire in our bones and to stand up and want to run out and do these things for the Lord. But we spend so much time, we spend so much effort into talking to the people who have heard it a thousand times and will not do anything about it. It's sad because you don't want to give up. You know people like this in your life that you've had a million conversations with and nothing ever changes because there's no conviction. They won't give their heart over to the Lord. It, if that doesn't break your heart and bring you to shambles, I do not know what will. John 6, no one comes to Christ unless the Father first draws them. No one comes to Christ unless the Father first draw them. Pray. Pray. Lord, draw them. Please. Open opportunities in my life. Give me the chance to go tell. Give me the chance to go spread your gospel. Give me the chance for that conversation, but beforehand, and if you know that the Holy Spirit is convicting you and you have a split second, you pray. Right then, right there. Pray, Lord, draw them. And if you can, I believe that the Holy Spirit will do it on your behalf. Jesus made an example Jesus made an example. How many times did he pray to the Father? That's, for, that's an example for us of how we're supposed to interact with Christ Almighty. So pray. If you are not hated by some, you are doing something wrong. If there is never any opposition to what you are doing, you are probably not doing it. I, I told you that, that this was how I was won over, and I would, I would love to tell you how that happened briefly, and, you know, I can't give every detail by any means, but, but in, I believe, my, I, I was in later, later high school, my, my junior year, I believe, and I, I, I have a hard time remembering when this actual date happened because it actually wasn't for a little bit after this that I really got saved and changed my life around for Jesus, but somebody took the time out of their day. My, it, it, it was somebody that I had known in, in high school. He was one of my very good friends. His name's Eric. I've talked about him before. He's a great guy. Um, took the, I, I went to church with him, and he asked, he, he, man, he... He dragged me because <laughs> I did not want to go. I didn't want to take the time out of my day. I had other things to do, and he dragged me. And, and, and all the times that he would drag me to, to church, uh, you know, I kept, I kept coming up with the same excuses. No, I don't, I don't need to be in church. I don't need to be in church. What does Hebrews have to say about that? Do not neglect to meet with fellow believers. Do not neglect to meet with each other. We're here for a reason, friends. We're uplifting each other. We're building each other up. And we're by, by all means the most important. We are serving and worshiping the Lord God Almighty. But I had excuses. I don't need to go to church to be saved. I don't need to. And yes, I was right. I, 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 we don't have to go to church to be saved. But I believe that going to church is absolutely positively a fruit that should show in your life after you are saved. It absolutely is. 
It's another way, it's another desire that you have to serve the Lord and to be in his presence. But I, 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 he dragged me, and there was finally one point, and I'll never forget the conversation because it just, and maybe this doesn't hit you as powerfully as what it did me, but I was going through a very, a very difficult time in my life. I, I was incredibly rebellious. I was doing essentially whatever I, I wanted in my life, and I was off the rails. I was off the rails in, in, in sin and, and, I mean, swimming in my own depravity. And he said, you know, have, have you ever just, have you ever just not wanted to hate your life? I said, yeah. Yeah. Because I knew, and he knew where I came from. I wasn't in church every week by any means, but I, 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 got, I got sort of dragged along, you know, every once in a while. And, and whenever I was, I knew. I knew that God existed. I, I, there, that he, I knew that, that there was, that the Lord wanted me as he wants everybody. And when he said that, I, I finally understood that I, I can't stand what I'm doing because the Lord wants something different. The Lord despises to watch us walk in depravity. He's not okay with it. And if you think that he is, you're wrong. No matter what the, 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 these church, these so-called preachers tell you, if you think that it is okay to continue walking in, in, in depravity, doing whatever you want, you're, you're on the wrong track. So I said, yeah, I, I, I do. And he said, I, I know that you've gone to church. And I had a false sense of salvation, as many people do. I had a false sense of salvation and believing that, uh, that I was saved because, you know, I, I said that I believed in Jesus and I gave my heart to him. And, but or I asked him into my heart and... I'm, I did, I, I did, but there was absolutely nothing to show for it in my life. There was absolutely nothing to show for it in my life. There was no fruit. I was a dead tree. And he said, give your, just give your life to Jesus, man. You've waited long enough. And I did. And a few weeks later, I, I did, and man, I was just absolutely on fire. <laughs> I was absolutely on fire, man. I wanted to be in this every day, 10 times a day, reading, studying. Man, I, that's all that I could think about was Christ Jesus. I remember waking up in the morning, going to high school. I'm sure you all remember, nobody wakes up in the morning wanting to go to high school. I woke up in the morning wanting to go to high school because I was so excited to tell people about Jesus. I was so excited to tell people about this newfound love that I had from, 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 from the Almighty who stepped down in my sin and in my disgust and put his hand out and said, you're mine, you're mine. Step away from who you once were, you're mine. And Eric did a lot of Really nice things for me, you know. I mean, he didn't have very much money or anything. I mean, nobody really does in high school, I guess. But, you know, he'd try to buy me, buy me lunch and dinner, or, you know, get me, you know, even if it was just a happy birthday text, you know, is he just cared because he was the hand and feet of Jesus, and he knew that, that by reaching in and having conversation with people, being Christ to people, showing the love of Jesus, that's what wins people over. And, and, and theology and apologetics, they're all really good, and we have to use them out in the street. We have to. We have to give an ultimate basis on why we believe. Do not neglect that. Do not neglect that. Always be prepared to give a defense of your faith, but in the end, it's the love of Jesus. It's the love of Christ. That's what reaches into our soul and absolutely pierced us. That's why his greatest commandment is to love God and love your neighbor. 
Give money to the homeless. Give money to the homeless. But if you don't share Jesus, it was worthless. Take care of the widow. Take care of the widow. But if you don't share Jesus, it was worthless. Go to the hospital bed where people are dying and, and, and talk to them and give them what they need, assist them in these last hours or days, whatever it may be of their life. But if you don't give them Jesus, it was worthless. When we pass on, when we pass on, there's only going to be one thing that matters. There is only going to be one thing that matters, and that's if the Lord Jesus covers you in your sin. I even know why I'm flipping these, because I'm barely using them at this point. But um, I, my, my ultimate goal, and I hope that your goal is the exact same in life. Getting to the point in our life, like our newfound love for Christ, where all we want is to serve him in everything that we do. Do you all remember that? I mean, do you all remember that time in your life? Seriously. Because I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and challenge you. If you've never had a point where the Lord reached in and brought you out from your depravity and you weren't excited to tell people about that and to live for him and read whatever it may be, you might want to pray you might want to have a conversation with the Lord. But that my ultimate goal and what I hope our ultimate goal is, and I hope that after this revival, man, we are just fired up to do it, is that all we want in life, all that we want is God's will. All we want is to be like Christ. Do you want to be here in your walk? Do you seek to be in this position in your walk with Christ? Or are you, are you okay with where you're at? If we, ain't, if we ain't moving forward on the train, we're going back. If we ain't moving forward in Christ, we're going backwards. And you're dragging people. You're dra yeah, man, you're a dead weight. Other people are carrying you. I've learned this lesson the hard way many a time. Read. Constantly open up your Bible. Understand this. If you're not there in your walk and you, you, you haven't been there in your walk, open this up. Read it every single day, every night. I know it's really hard. I know we're busy. I know we've got things going on in life, but I promise you this will absolutely change your life. It will mold you into the person that God wants you to be. Pray. Pray every day. Meditate on scripture. Spend your life praying and having conversation with God because he's your friend. And like Daryl said the other night, don't just open up with all my wants and all my needs and all my desires. Listen. Spend a few minutes listening. Meditate in the word of God and he will speak. When that starts to happen, that's whenever we actually start to desire God's will in our life because we're not talking. We're listening. And he's going to tell you what his will is. And I'm gonna, I'll also warn you, just like anything, it's, I saw some dude like many, many years ago talk about the dangerous prayers, the dangerous prayers. It's true. If you start praying to God, yeah, it's dangerous. It's like asking for patience. Well, guess what he's going to do the next day? He's going to give you an opportunity to prove that you're patient. And it's really hard sometimes. God, break my heart for what breaks yours. He will. He will. I'm going to kind of end with this. But um, my, my buddy Eric that I was talking about, um, he's now going to a seminary in, in Kentucky, and he's gotten the opportunity uh, through the Lord God Almighty. I mean, he's just opened doors and doors and doors. I mean, if you're really seeking him, the Lord's going to make it happen. Amen. 
if you want to go on a mission trip and serve him, the Lord's going to make it happen. Amen. I mean, he, he, he's going to make a way for whatever in the world that, that, that he wants, whatever his will is. And if you seek that, he's going to make it, make that opportunity clear. But, um, one of his things that he really wanted to do was, was, was participate and, and go to seminary and, um, the Lord's really opened that door for him, and I, I'll be honest, I, I miss him. I'm sure you all have somebody like that in your, in your life that you just miss. And I'm, I'm, I am so incredibly blessed because I feel like what, I feel like, what, uh, <laughs> what, 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 what he was in the beginning of my relationship with Christ, somebody that I can kind of lean on, man, I've been replaced well, I've, I've had four or five guys come, six guys come into my life that have just uh, poured out into me. And for that, I, 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 I'm not even going to try to put that in words because you can't. You can't. Be that for somebody. Be that for somebody. Because you're going to have people like that in your life, man, that they're going to pour out all their, everything that they have on you and they're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They're going to be ready for that phone call at one in the morning. Be ready to do that for somebody else because it's not easy. Something that he told me as he left because I'm, he, you know, he, 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 he's gone. I mean, um, his goal as of now is basically to go to, to, to seminary and um, I think he's, he, he wants to do missionary work, serve the Lord overseas and he's, started doing that I praise the Lord um, praise the Lord but um, it's sometimes saying goodbye is difficult for somebody like that in your life but something that that was said to me that absolutely just struck me and tore my tore me to the core this life is short this life is short our goal is not to be buddy-buddy with one another. It's to go win the lost. Amen. There's a season for being buddies. There's a season for having friends. And I believe that that season may never end. But the issue is, is that if the Lord calls you somewhere else and he has a different purpose for you in your life, seek God's will. Amen. And it's just another example of how if you really want that in your life, if you really this is your utmost goal in life is to seek God's will, not your own. He will make you uncomfortable and call you out into the deeps of the ocean for his will. We are fishermen. We've got a job to do. Amen. The band going to come back up? Oh, well, the band wants to come back up. <laughs> you want to play the guitar? <laughs> How about we as a church stand up and say this is it. We're going to be holy. How about we as a church stand up and say, you know what? We're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're going to do what your will is, not ours. We're going to recognize you in your holiness, and we're going to stand up as Moses did, take our shoes off in holy ground, and we are going to serve you. First and foremost, above everything else in this world, not our boyfriends, not our girlfriends, not our parents, not our friends, nothing. It is him. That is our goal. Because I promise you, when you stand before him, that is the only thing that's going to matter. That is the only thing that is going to matter. Will you hide your face in fear before the Lord? Or will you understand and know having that blessed assurance of Christ Jesus because of what he did for us? Are we going to be obedient and following him for, our, for the rest of our lives? Tunnel vision, the light at the end of it, I'm going to get to it. Or are we going to stray off? Straight and narrow is the way to righteousness and few will find it. Broad is the way to destruction. So I'm going to let the band do a little bit of singing. Can we give another 
hand for those, these guys. They were absolutely wonderful. And by the way, Satan, uh, man, he's attacking, amen? He got into that sound system and everything else, and, and uh, Casey looked over, and, and we were kind of, I was like, oh, I know he's going to do it. But <laughs> he's, he looked over like, you know what, we're, 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 we're going to sing a cappella. The devil is not getting in here tonight. I don't care if he takes away all the sound systems. He can take away the lights. He can rip this tent off of the stilts and go that way with it. We are going to sit here, and we are going to be obedient to Christ and his word. Amen. Amen. Everlasting. So I'm going to pray. If you do not know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you do not know Christ Jesus not only as your Savior, but as the Lord of your life, your commander in chief, the one who you have been you have been freed from the slaves from the from the from the slavery and the chains of bondage and now you are a slave to him instead. If you do not know that Jesus that died for you on the cross, Come up here. Bow down before him. If you do know Jesus and you've still got issues in your life, man, you've got struggles, you've got things that you're trying so hard to get rid of, there's people that love you and that want to pray over you. Come up. And if you've fallen back, maybe taken a couple steps in the wrong direction, Maybe you're that caboose on the train that's, that everybody seems to be going forward, and you're like, man, God, I'm, I'm just stuck here. Tonight, today is the day. Stop. Run forward. Come up here. Pray. Just have a conversation with God on the altar. I promise you, you won't regret it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this week. We thank you, Lord, for this band that has come here and taken time out of their weeks, Lord, to praise you. I thank you, Lord, for the few who have showed up tonight, Lord, but they want you. They desire you, Lord. They, they, they want to partake in what it is that you have to offer, Lord, and I am so grateful. I am so grateful, Lord. We know that the, the gates to destruction are broad. Many will go down it. But there are few. There are few. There is a remnant left over. There are people who want that narrow gate, who want to find you at the end of it, Lord. And I thank you for them, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for a special anointing, Lord, a renewal of spirit for people who, who really want you, Lord, who are truly seeking you, not just sitting down on the sidelines and doing nothing for your kingdom, Lord. I pray that they get up and they get in the game as well, Lord. But I pray for these few who... who who are, are really desiring you, Lord, that you just give them the, the, the power, Lord, the understanding, the spirit in these times that it seems like it's difficult to follow you, Lord. I just pray that you give a special anointing. We love you so much. And I thank you for everything that you do in our lives. Thank you for giving us this free country where we can serve you, Lord. But if you take that all away and people get serious about God, they get serious about serving you, Lord, so be it. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy, beautiful, and precious name that I pray. Amen.